important part that sheepdogs have played in helping to develop the Australian wool and meat industry. Imagine the manpower required to handle sheep on a farm, in stockyards, droving or trucking sheep to the market. The extra number of people involved would make the wool and meat industry totally unviable. The Australian Sheepdog is truly the unsung hero of our wool and meat industry. Willingly working up to 9 or 10 hours per day with no fuel costs, complaints or wages, requiring only one square meal per day and an affectionate pat on the head. The high standard required from a Sheepdog is evident here at the Sheepdog Trials. The finesse and discipline shown are the results of many hours of working and training together. The amount of success that can be achieved in training a sheepdog depends on many variables. It would be fair to say that a good trainer, given the time, could train most dogs. The final degree of finesse and control would depend on the individual dog's natural ability. Considering that most farmers and users of dogs have only a limited amount of time to spend on training, it's important that you start with the right dog. In Australia, there are two main working breeds of sheepdogs. Both make excellent sheepdogs with slightly different working characteristics. The Australian Kelpie is a very robust dog and has the ability to work long hours on hot days and is generally a very forceful dog, therefore more suitable to yard or shed conditions. The Border Collie, considered the ultimate sheep dog, has very strong herding instincts, not as outgoing as Kelpies, and can be very timid. These dogs can be very good casting dogs and therefore can be taught both paddock and yard work. A collie that has force will work in most conditions, yards, sheds and paddocks, and they are indeed a valuable asset. Their gentle work style makes them more suitable for sheepdog trial work. To highlight the basic training techniques, the trainer will use a two-year-old dog that has no previous training experience and very little handling. The dog must be able to stay behind or heel. This is a simple exercise to teach. Wave a piece of polythene hose to discourage the dog from walking out in front. This exercise will be important to maintain control of the dog when casting at a later stage. The sit command is not as important but is easy to teach at this stage. Once again jerk on the collar and push down on the dog's rump at the same time say sit. The dog will soon realise what is required. When working in a yard or paddock the trainer must be able to stop the dog. To stop the dog jerk on the dog's neck at the same time saying stop. Practice this until the dog will stop without jerking on the lead. The method used to teach the dog to stay requires a very long lead. Make the dog sit, then walk away keeping a constant light pressure on the lead. If the dog attempts to move, pull firmly on the lead and command the dog to stay. Keep reminding the dog to stay while still applying light pressure on the lead. The weight of the lead keeps light pressure on the dog's collar, making it aware that the trainer still has contact with it. Once the end of the lead is reached, release pressure and allow the lead to fall to the ground. The dog should stay. This exercise then develops into a combination exercise. Call the dog here or come, then finish by instructing it to sit. From this one exercise, the dog will learn to stay, come 
and sit. Because these exercises are very important in the dog's early training, the trainer must be very firm. Basic training sessions should be no longer than 15 minutes per day and should be mastered in three to five days. Test the young dog prior to entry to the sheep yards to ascertain if the trainer has control from a distance. When a young dog responds to command from a distance, it can be considered ready for its introduction to sheep. A dog with natural herding instincts will want to retrieve sheep so it's essential that the trainer takes a position on the opposite side of the sheep to the dog. This is known as the working position. Command the dog to get back, keeping it behind the sheep. At all times, try and work the dog from this position. It is important that an old dog starting to work for the first time responds to basic obedience. In some cases, it may be necessary to call the dog off. Sit the dog in the yard and restrain it as long as possible whilst endeavouring to move to the other side of the sheep. Once in position, encourage the dog with movement and whistling to move up, although most dogs don't need that encouragement. Note the dog's action and style. At this point, don't be too critical. From these observations, the trainer will start to ascertain the dog's potential. Upon observing this two-year-old dog, it can be seen he works close and has a bounding, playful action, carrying his tail high. This indicates the dog is having fun. A dog that is concentrating works with its tail down. These problems can be corrected at a later date. Notice the dog and the trainer are maintaining the working position. If the trainer can call the dog off when it is fresh and full of enthusiasm, this would indicate the dog is responding to basic training. The new trainer will need to understand the terminology used in this video. When the dog is sent to gather the sheep, it is termed casting the dog. To commence casting the dog, the dog should be in the correct position in relation to the handler. The dog is positioned off to the side and behind the handler. This will help indicate to the dog the direction it should go. Ideally, the cast should be wide enough so as not to disturb the sheep. When the dog is in the correct position, it can be asked to move up. To cast the dog in a clockwise direction, instruct the dog to get away or left. To cast the dog in an anti-clockwise direction, use the command come out or right. Eye is the ability of a dog to stare and concentrate. The amount of eye a dog shows is critical. Too much eye and it will concentrate only on one sheep and be frozen and slow in its movements. The term driving sheep is used when the trainer and the dog are working the sheep together from behind the flock. A young dog should never be put in this position. The dog should be fully experienced at heading sheep or getting to the front of the flock before it is allowed to drive sheep. Many potentially good farm dogs have been ruined through driving sheep too soon. Cover is the ability of a dog to keep sheep together whilst pushing them through a gateway or retrieving them or in most situations where the dog is required to handle sheep. A dog is said to have correct cover when it covers both sides of the sheep. A large percentage of a dog's work is covering the sheep and keeping the sheep together. Incorrect cover is when the dog works inside the outside trailing line of the sheep. 
This allows the flock to spread and the sheep to break away. A dog that works to the shoulder is mainly an old dog, a slow dog or a pup that hasn't got the speed to catch the sheep and go to the front and head them. As can be seen, this dog is at the shoulder and can't get to the head. This will spread the sheep, allowing for a breakaway from behind, making more work for the dog. A close working dog, when cast, will run straight to the flock, disturbing sheep before the cast is finished. It tends to cut the sheep off from the point of the flock and consequently has to regather them, creating a lot more work for the dog. Experience has shown that this is a major problem with short-haired dogs and fast-moving dogs working close in the paddock. Probably the most important part in training is the correct administration of discipline. The degree will depend on the dog's temperament. To correctly apply discipline, it must be done at the exact time that correction is required. A trainer will experience what is known as the test period. That is when the dog or pup will test you to see what its limits are relating to discipline. At this stage, be firm and quickly recognize mischief. Remember, firm discipline early in the dog's training will be rewarded with an obedient dog for the rest of its life. Selecting a pup on its genetic background will ensure a high percentage of success. That is, both parents and grandparents were good working dogs. Training a dog with natural herding instincts will make your task easier and require a lot less work. Starting a pup young has a lot of advantages, but the younger it starts, the more protection it will require. That is, it will be important that the pup is not trampled on or the sheep do not bluff or intimidate it in any way. Introduce the pup to the sheep at a distance. Let it watch the sheep being handled from outside the yard. This increases its interest. To look at variations in training techniques, I sought the assistance of two of Australia's leading sheepdog trainers, David Hine and Jack Hiscock. David Hine of Trainers Lagoon, North Central Victoria, has the distinction of scoring the perfect score in a sheepdog trial. I observed David instructing agricultural students in the art of sheepdog training. Selecting a pup, David, what do you look for? When selecting a pup, I try and look for um, a busy, um, a busy one in the in the litter, um, preferably not not hanging back and shy first out to the uh, the food. But it is it's no guarantee that that's going to be the best one. You really have to uh, to try two or th three dogs, young dogs, before um, you know what they're going to be like. Uh, at what age do you actually start to introduce a dog to a, a series of discipline? Um, I, I like to see them uh, working the sheep first, um, when I say working, chasing, showing interest in sheep, and if I think they're, they're moving nicely, then I'll uh, start to uh, introduce the discipline. But I don't like to uh, do too much discipline first, because um, sometimes you're not sure if, they're, if they won't work because they're frightened of what I'm thinking or whether they're just no good. So uh, I leave them uh, pretty free of mind when I show them sheep at first. So you introduce a dog at an early age? Yes, yes, uh, I can start showing them from um, three months on, uh, but don't want them to do much. They must be old enough to head the sheep. If they start running along from behind, they get into a habit of chasing them. So I want them uh, old enough that they can run faster than the sheep. This is a young dog, uh, I call him Mick. He's about five months old and um, he looks like he's going to have a go. I haven't tried him in this yard before, but we'll, we'll give him a go. I'll leave the long lead on, and then if something goes wrong, I should be able to stand on the end of it. <laughs> he's showing a bit of interest anyway, but uh, that wasn't too bad. He got to the, the head that time. For, for a first time out, I'd, I'd be fairly pleased with that. He's, um, he'll probably put them over the fence, but I'll just stand on the end of that rope and slow things up a bit. I've got my feet on it, so at least I can call him off when I need to now. He's, he's holding that old girl pretty well. 
Good boy. Good boy. Come here, mate. Come here, boy. Steady up, boy. Steady up. That's quite, ideally, it's quite good to be in a corner like this because he's only got about uh, 90 degrees to cover there. Whereas if you're in the open paddock, he's got 360. So we've got the other one coming with him. Yeah, well, he shows a bit of style anyway, but uh, we're going to have to spend a bit of time on a few, uh, a few lessons, sits and come out of it. But I like to see them do this before I discipline them. I, I can see exactly what he is without what I've made him. Well, now we know that Mick here is interested in sheep, uh, I intend to take the time to, to, to teach him a few manners. And we'll, we'll try now to, to sit while he's on the short lead and walk along with him on a lead like this. Come on, boy. And then sit, a bit of a sharp tug. Sit, sit, sit now, sit. Good boy, Mick. Good boy, Mick. Mick, good boy. That's a good boy. So that's just to give him a bit of an idea. And if we keep that up for two or three weeks, I'm sure he won't have to be on the string anymore. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, him doing a bit more work and, and uh, hopefully he's, he's going to be a good one. Uh, this is another young dog, about five months old. He, his name's Rad. And uh, my, na my cousin Rad him and I just picked him up this morning. So I don't know anything about him, but we'll, we'll um, like with old Mick, we'll give him a try on these couple in this yard. Come on, boy. Come on, Rad. You're not too keen on the string, but look at that. Good boy, Rad. <laughs> well, he looks like he might have a bit of a grab if he gets close enough, but he's still chasing, so... Hey, whoa there. <laughs> cut it out, cut it out. Cut it out now. Steady, eye, steady boy. Right, well, you've just seen the advantage of the long lead anyway. We, we managed to get law and order on that. I'm not sure that I like that bite, but at least he's, uh, he's keen on the work. We Hopefully uh, he'll uh, stop doing that when he gets a, uh, a bit older, but we'll just let him go once more and see how what happens. Oh dear. Hey, 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 you don't do that. Steady now. That might do for the time. This one could be for sale at any time. Well, that wasn't all that uh, good of exhibition with Rad that time. He, that's the first time I've seen him um, working. I didn't like that hanging on to the side of the sheep at all, but uh, young dogs being excited do do that, and uh, it needn't be that he'll be a biter all his life, but I've got to decide now um, um, how to remedy that. I could perhaps try a muzzle that could stop him biting. Um, he can't hang on anyway, and uh, or else working bigger mobs that can can take the excitement out of the work, and perhaps even run him a long distance before before I let him go on sheep. But um, uh, he, he shows that he's very keen to work, but it's just the bite is the problem at this stage. After we've introduced the young dogs to the sheep, it's time then to uh, to uh, teach them to go their left and right. And this is a um, an older brother of Rad's. His name's Bill. And um, I use this broom handle with a collar on it, and that way it keeps him back from under my feet. If I'm just trying to move him left and right on a lead, he'll run under my feet. I can keep him back by, because he's on the pole. And then if we teach him to go right, we, we hit the ground. Right, right, right. Stop, 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 Bill. Stop, sit, sit. So that frightened him over to his right. And then to go the other way, we hopefully left, left, left. Good boy, left, left, left. He's not quite so keen. I won't hit him at this stage, but we just tap him over sometimes to stop. The right, right. So he soon gets the message to go the other way from the stick. We try it once more that way. Right, right. Good boy, stop, stop. And we just try left again. Left, left. He'd see he is moving away from it, even though he's, he's, he's a little bit concerned. Now, after roughing him up a bit like that, we've got to have a good talk. Good boy, Bill. <laughs> Good boy. That's a good boy. A high-pitched voice is what I usually use, and he's a good boy. About the other only command I use is get away from me. And um, if I growl and, and, and smack the ground with a stick, hopefully old Bill here will move away. And then it comes to the end of the rope, we sit him down, and then call him in, and a good pat should greet him at the finish. So I'll just give him a try now. Sit there, Bill. Sit. Sit down, boy. Sit. Sit. 
Right in there, get out of it, Bill. Get out of it. Sit, sit, sit. Yeah, good boy, Bill. Good boy. That's a good boy, Bill. Good boy. And we pat for quite a while if we're being a bit hard. And we'll give him just one more try. Now you sit there, Bill. Sit. Sit, Bill. Sit. You get out of it, Bill. Now sit, sit. Good boy, Bill. You Bill, good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. Good boy, Bill. <laughs> good boy. Well, that, that was basically as I teach them to get away from me and come back and come, and come to me. To train a dog to respond to the whistle, we give the whistle first and then use the command that we need. And, um, for example, we'll, we'll try... Uh, good boy, Bill. Sit. <laughs> I think he must have had the, the, the lesson before, but... So I just... Um, Use it in that order. Blow the whistle and then give the command. And uh, sit. Good boy, Bill. Good boy, Bill. Good boy. I'd now like to uh, demonstrate a few different types of dogs. Um, this one's Skeeter. She's um, a five, five-year-old female and um, a nice, easy dog to control and doesn't bustle uh, sheep very much. Dog must be behind you as you're going to cast the dog. And uh, as I'll show you directions later, but I put my hand one way and she goes the other. Right, Skeeter. <whistles> Skeeter, Skeeter, Skeeter. A good cast is when a dog is, is sent from behind the, the worker, out wide around the sheep and comes in from behind. If he casts too straight at them, he could push them off course and, uh, uh, and this creates a lot of extra work and it does upset the sheep. If the dog is positioned behind the sheep, a, a steady approach is then required to start the sheep running in your, in to your direction. Up, and uh, up, if a dog is under control, he should be able to be sat down if they're coming too quickly or uh, just steadied down. And, and the sheep should not be bustled uh, excessively on, on this bringing to you. But uh, this time we've got the younger Border Collie, his name's Shep, and he's not trained to perfection like perhaps Skeeter, but uh, he's a nice young dog and we'll, we'll see how he goes. Right. <whistles> Keep back now. Keep back. <whistles> Stop! Stop! He's not quite listening, but he's not a pushing in all that hard, so I'll leave him be. But I do like him to stop when I blow the whistle. At this point, I can't quite see what he's doing, but... Uh... Shep! Shep! Here, Shep! Stop! Stop! Right. I try and keep them on their feet if I can. Uh, um, sitting right down is sometimes handy, but... Uh, I prefer them to stay on their feet as, uh, when you give the command stop. Uh, he's bustling them along a bit more than Skeeter, but uh, he hasn't done as much work over the last couple of days, so he, he's a bit fresher. Shep! Stop. Hey, Shep! This time I'm going to use a Kelpie. His name's Butch, and he's only just over a year old, and uh, I enjoy working him. I've had him for a few months now, and sit. Right. Get right out now. He's just hugging in a bit closer there than uh, some of the others, but he's got a bit of cover once he gets working. He doesn't push in too hard all the time. Go back, Butch. It's just coming this way a bit much, so I wouldn't hurt if he hopped through the fence, but get back, Butch. You'll see the sheep are moving a bit quicker than they were the special gay butch get back than they were the, with the first dog because it's a very settling type dog and, and uh, for weak sheep it's very nice to use her but uh, when the sheep get a bit tired uh, butch is pretty handy then too he's doing a fairly good job there just bringing him along nicely i right, get out butch hop through get by get right through hop through there you are, Butch. Come behind. Butch! Butch! Here, Butch! He just went a bit far and gave a bark, but 
It doesn't. Uh... Hey, Butch. Good boy. Go back now. Go back. Good boy. Hey, Butch. Butch. Good boy, Butch. Butch. Good boy. Good boy. Now sit. Sit. Uh, Butch here uh, did a fairly good job then, and uh, he's the type of dog most farmers would prefer to have. Um, they seem to um, just work half the time, they don't listen to you, uh, but um, I think they're more natural worker, whereas the Border Collie, we train them to perfection and position them in yards at a time. But um, you've got to watch that you don't let them do too much yard work early in their life, as uh, that can make them work too close to sheep and teach them to bite and then when you're doing um, open work like we've just seen butch at they haven't got the cover they just walk in the middle of mobs and if you can train them to work in the open on mobs first and then teach them yard works so i think you'll end up with a better dog come over now now sit sit down sit Right, right, get right out. So I'll um, demonstrate perhaps um, three or four dogs all working together. And then the main reason I do that is to get, for exercise. If I've got a, a trial to go to and I want to give them some work, I let them all go together to run the, the steam out of them. Right. <laughs> Sit. 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 Left. Sit. Sit. Right. Sit. Left. Left. Now sit. The the sheepdog is is uh, meant to keep the sheep up to the to the worker, not hunt them away. Uh, well, that's as I see it. And uh, uh, for directing a dog, it's, it's a lot quicker and easier to block the dog the way you don't want him to go to pointing the direction you want him to go. And as, as uh, the dog is meant to keep sheep up to man, if I walk one way, the dog goes the other to, to, to balance the sheep. So I work the same way. And uh, by sending Lady this time, I'll, I'll put the stick out and block her from going to her left, and it'll send her anti-clockwise to her right. Sit down, Lady. You sit. Your left. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Lady. Right. Good girl. <whistles> Way back. Way back. Uh, that was to the right. We'll now try to the to the left and uh, stop there, ladies. Lady, lady, stop, stop. Left. So we block the way we don't want her to go. Um, it doesn't take them long to to get that idea of left and right. Uh, this time we'll try uh, still with the blocking, but to try and force the dog to cast a bit wider. So if I just set the dog up behind me, um, sit down, Skeeter, sit. Sit down, and on to growl and keep her right back. Sit there, sit. You get right back. Get, sit down now, get right back. Sit down, sit. Get right back. Get right back. Uh, this time I'll, I'll try and show you how to uh, make a wider cast, still by using the blocking technique, and, uh, and by growling, and he should get back. Uh, the sheep aren't very far away, but I should be able to get him back that way a bit. I stop there. Stop. Boy, oh, gee. Stop there. Stop. Get it. Stop, ship. Get out of it. Stop. Yeah, get back out of it. Get right out now. Boy, gee, I'll deal with you. Get back out of it. He's a young dog and naturally like to come hard at them. Now stop. Stop. Stop there. I do you get through there. Go on, get out. Get right out now. But that's by forcing him out, and if I encourage him to work, he should come in pretty quick. Here, Chef, here, hop in. Here, Chef. You don't have to tell him twice to, to come and push, but we did, uh, we did uh, keep him back fairly well. That was quite a good example. 
he likes to come in and push and it's just that on command he should keep back and stop pushing and that's the, as I mentioned that's the thing that annoys me most of all a dog pushing when you don't want it right oh now get out of now get out of it get out of it stop stop get back out of it get out of it now now stop stop So even after I've been growling a lot, he should come. Uh, stop! I like a dog to come to me as soon as I call, and um, uh, there's a fair chance that when, when I call him that he'll leave the sheep, even though he's very keen, he'll leave them and come to me. I'll just send him once more after them. <whistles> Way back! <whistles> now sit! Sit down! Here, Shep! Here, Shep! Good boy, Shep! Shep! Hey, good boy! Here, Shep! Good dog! Good dog! So that's a pretty good example of a, of a dog coming, coming quickly to you. And uh, you're a good boy, Shep. In teaching a dog to back sheep, I try and create a protective situation where the dog can clearly go over a, a few tightly packed sheep in a pen and jump into a, an empty yard so as he doesn't get hurt. Um, usually I, I use the back of the shearing shed where there's a tin wall one side so he can't get over that side and, uh, and, and put more sheep in the pens on the, on the other. So that way I can send him over the top, um, sit him down in the empty pen and then call him to me and there's no other way to come back to me but over the top of the, the uh, sheep that, uh, that we're working on. At some stage you will have to decide at what point um, you, you're going to go on with a dog or discard him. And uh, I think if you're watching for or the, the points I mentioned, getting to the, the, the front, um, freedom of movement and a, a nice distance back off their sheep, not pushing too hard, if they've got those things, well, it's just then you work on the discipline, the, the sit, the come behind, the left and right. And, uh, but if he's not doing that part as well as you'd like, the, the uh, general cover and, and, and getting to the front, well, there's a lot of young dogs in the country that are just wanting to be read. So we, we, uh, you really should discard a, a dog if he's not doing the, uh, measuring up to what you think he should be. I think it's extremely, extremely important to have good housing and, uh, and look after your dogs very well. The, the time it takes to train them is, is uh, so much that we don't want to um, fall down on uh, the inoculations. I do them for uh, distemper, hepatitis and parvo and uh, worm them regularly to keep them uh, uh, healthy for, for a hard day's work. Um, the, uh, the housing I, I use is up off the ground and I don't have any trouble with fleas and um, they're quite warm in the winter there. Right. Good dog. Right. Left, left. Good girl. Good lady. Lady, lady, good girl, good girl, lady, good girl, good girl, good girl. Well, that's that's about it. That's my way of working uh, sheep. Um, I hope that's been able to help some uh, new handlers with a few ideas. And um, I en really enjoy my working sheep dogs. And um, I think if they're well trained, you you enjoy their their company even more. For variation to David's training techniques, I spoke to Jack Hiscock of Kilmore, Central Victoria. Jack has been winning sheepdog trial events for many years and is one of Australia's more senior and most successful sheepdog trainers. Jack, what's your secret? Well, um, secret? That, uh, that's a bit of a hard question. Um, I just like dogs i've always liked dogs and i think it's a, a pleasure and an interest and it's a hobby that's about uh, the strength of all that jack you've obviously handled many dogs can you train any dog 
No, oh, well, no, you can't train any dog. You've got to have a dog that's interested and got a certain amount of ability. Oh, well, if you wanted to just train a dog to do certain things with sheep, I suppose you could train any dog, but to basically train a dog that's any use, no. And if you haven't got the dog the dog bred properly and the ability there, well, you, have, you wouldn't have much hope of getting a good dog. But if you've got got good breeding and good dogs behind them, you've always got a chance of getting a real good dog. But you do have the problem of getting a certain amount of dogs that are only very average, very ordinary dogs. These young pups we're looking at at the moment, Jack, what have you got in mind for them? Well, they'll progressively uh, be taught and got control of and they'll finish up champions, I hope, to work on the farm mainly, and progress enough to perhaps go to a trial or two. When I brought these pups out, I uh, held the, the uh, more frightened one back and let the one with the more, the more go in him go, and that'll encourage the one, the, the, the more shyer one, give her more confidence. I used to always have the idea I wouldn't have a blue-eyed pup on my mind one time, or one that wasn't marked black and white, but over the years I found out it's better to have a dog working right than to be bothered about his eye or his colour. I see, Jack, you're using some soft poly pipe there. Yes, it's polythene and it's uh, very soft on them, it doesn't hurt them or anything. It's better to use that than a stick because a stick's apt to, uh, you know, hurt them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what are you trying to do? Just get the pups interested and see how much force they've got and uh, their style of working. That's the main things, you know. You Pups will do a lot of things that are not not good. And if you can get the, get the good things in the pup early and then they're worth training, but a lot of times there's a lot of things in them that you don't like, well, I think you're wasting your time. So you get an indication at this age yeah. as to how good the pup's likely to turn out to be. That's right, yes. Mm, see that pup up there now? He doesn't mind being up there. A lot of pups would be frightened stiff. They'd freeze. Too much nerve. Mm. And that's where you find out. You don't actually have the pup on a, on a line where you, you teach him to sit and come to you and stop and... Not very often, no. You can... Well, I don't, but I wouldn't say it was wrong. It's not, it's, a, it's all right, there's nothing wrong with it. Put them on a lead and get control of them that way. This is a pup bred that's similar to the little ones, only it's older. It's had the same treatment as those. Uh, it's shown a fair bit of keenness there now. And it'll work sheep fairly well. It's about five or six months old and, oh, you could yard sheep with that pup now. All the training that's, that that dog knows has been in this yard and it only gets a few minutes, oh, when you get time, once or twice a week. But it's worked ever since it saw sheep, that one. Work anything that moves, work fowls or cats or anything. It's just naturally keen to work. And that will make a pretty reasonable dog. It's not as strong as it could be. The way I get these pups to move is to say, go out, to, to go out as to the left and come over as to the right. It's always important to use the, the right commands and don't vary from that, what it, whatever you say. I've had dogs uh, broken in by other people, but I never bother about the, what other people have commanded after about three weeks or a month you can still get the dog to answer to your your commands. I teach all my dogs in a small yard like that and uh, when when they, when you get the commands when they answer to your commands you can go out and get into a bit bigger paddock and and go that way. What I'm trying to achieve here with this dog is to uh, learn it a force and Learn it to cover. Learn it to cover as sheep move. And that's what I call 
handling ability, <coughs> stock handling ability for the dog. Some dogs never have it. They just stop there and stare. That dog's a little bit weak, a little bit too weak. You're using a method at the moment there of what? Just encouraging the dog to come up as close as possible? Oh, yeah, you? nip it on the nose if it's... and that'll encourage it to get stronger and get more confidence. You mentioned disciplines. What disciplines? There's no particular discipline. It's, uh, I discipline them by the no tone of my voice. You know, growl at them and, you know, say, you know, make your voice a bit deeper and make it say you're going to be a big noise, sort of. Gonna, you've got to bluff them at some way or another. You've always got to have their confidence all the time. Have them to come to you and be around you and all that sort of thing. It's no good if you hit a dog, the first thing you'll do is run away. And I don't believe in that. I don't think that's right. Well, this is a better type of dog, I think. He's only a pup too. He's, uh, well, he hasn't got, you know, a lot of confidence or keenness yet, but he will come. I like this dog. See the way that dog's covering. See that? He's forcing in, coming in closer all the time, doing it steady. This dog's ability to handle sheep would probably, in my opinion, beat uh, dogs that bark and run about, jump all over sheep bark, and you'll see dogs jumping all over sheep bark and the sheep not moving. Well, that dog will get up on them and uh, handle them. Well, this is another dog. He's of, uh, he's nearly trained, I think. He's about two year old, and he won a trial at Lansfield, yes, with his first, first or second time out on a trial ground. Comparing them with the other dogs, the other dogs are younger, and he's, uh, he's had a lot more experience and work. But I would, I would sooner the other, the last dog with his temperament and everything, I think. See, that dog's got a bit of fizz in him there now. The jump and the... He's all right, he's a good dog enough, but I can see things there I don't like a little bit. He has, he's got a habit of when he moves, he moves with a jerk. Whereas the other dog is a smooth moving dog. See the little jerk there? He has to move quickly. And you know, that's caused by fizz and nerve. See that little move? Whereas the other dog will sort of float. He can draft sheep with him or work cattle. He'll heal a little bit. He'll grab a sheep sometimes. You've got to control him a little bit. I like the other dog a little bit better, but he mightn't be as good a farm dog as this fella, just the same. Anyway, they're two good dogs. Graduating from the small yard into a larger paddock, what would you be looking for with the antics of a dog? Well, the first thing you would look for to see whether he's under command or not, see whether you've got that over to him in that little yard. That's, that's what I look for. Sit him down behind you and just see that he's uh, totally with you. You know, some dogs, if you sit them down, they might tear off after the sheep and tune out and they don't even hear you. Well, they're the sort of things you want to look for then you know whether you've got command on your dog or not that way, I find. Do you find it necessary to use a long lead at all? No, I've never never used a long lead. I put them on a short lead just to keep them up near and get them to follow you about the yard and that, that's all. To... With the intermediate size yard, is there a, an ideal number of sheep you should use? No, not particularly. It's any number up to about from three to a dozen, I suppose. It doesn't actually matter, I don't think. And, and what lessons would you actually be handing out to the dog? What would you be asking him to do? Oh, just, to, just to pull him from one side of the sheep to the other and get behind the sheep and to head him and to sit down. They're the basic controls I use. Jack, you've had extensive successes in dog trials. Uh, from basic farm training or training to be a farm dog, graduating to a trial, what sort of procedures do you take? Well, I don't take any. Um, I think I break, break me dogs in good enough to do anything out on the farm, so why couldn't I do anything on a trial ground?
it's only a matter of getting your sheep and putting them through a few holes. And I think if you have obstacles stuck up all around your place and just train your dogs on obstacles, um, oh, well, I don't know, they get, if sheep beat them around the obstacle, sometimes it spoils a the dog. They just stand there and watch the sheep go around. Do you use a whistle? Yes, when I can, when it whistles. Sometimes I just blow and air comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got round right, right to an umpire's whistle yet, but I'll have to, I think. I see the dogs working away from the sheep. Yeah. You, you, you've taught the dog to keep back. That's right. Well, see, those sheep are wild. Now, you get a wild sheep, you've got to have your dog standing off because they can't control a, sheep, a wild sheep in close until, until such time as your sheep get quieter and the dog gets the better of them and then you bring, you bring your dog in, and that's all taught in the little yard. And you, and you don't put them on a long lead at this stage? Not that stage, no. Some people do. I've never bothered. I've always worked on the theory that you get control of your dog and you get the feel of your dog, how far you can control him and all that. Yeah. When you're training a, young, or a younger dog than this one, you wouldn't have a situation like that. You would uh, have the sheep in the middle of the paddock where he could get around them and uh, use his confidence and not get a sticky situation like that. That wouldn't that wouldn't be any good for a young dog. But on this one, it's sort of trying him out, trying seeing how good he may be. If a dog can get him out, get sheep out of a situation like that, he's not too bad. And that's the control I'm talking about. You sit him down and. Let him go steady at those sheep, whereas a young dog, he'd just fly around there and uh, probably put the sheep through the fence. Especially with that number of sheep, two, three yeah. sheep. That's right. Three sheep would be worse than a mob. That's what you call driving a sheep, driving sheep away from you, which you've got to do in some trials, and which is uh, very handy on a farm. You can sit back and get your dogs to drive a mob of sheep while you, you can read the sun if you like. Well, before you start talk, thinking about teaching a dog to drive, you want to have him broken into head and first, and then gradually get him to drive from there, and it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty iffy, iffy business. You can ruin a dog pretty quick trying to get him to drive, especially if he doesn't like it. That's one of the musts in dogs, I think, if they don't go to the head naturally, They've got a disadvantage. They're on a handicap. Jack, there's a, a person who doesn't have much experience in in uh, handling sheep. How does he go with uh, handling dogs? Oh, well, I don't... I really think he's at a disadvantage, but he's not that he's not that far down the track if he's got a bit of common sense and, and oh, judgment, I'd say. Jack, at what stage do you teach a dog to back? Oh, well, first of all, you teach him in the yard, throw the pup up on the sheep's back and get him to not be terrified of getting up on their backs. And then, say, when they learn the basics of outside work, get your sheep tightened up in a race or somewhere where they can't fall down, and then get him to... Uh, jump up on them. You teach him in the yard to jump up on them, just to jump up on their back. So if he's learnt that in the yard, he should be able to learn it to jump up on them in a race, tight race, for a start, and he'll go from there. Once he gets confidence, he'll go from one end of the race to the other, if he's not frightened. I was going to say, it'd be pretty crucial at this stage that he didn't get hurt by the sheep. Oh, yes, well, you want to see that that's what I mean by putting them in tight that he can't fall down between them and get stood on and get himself hurt until he gets confidence that he can run from one end of the race to the other or whatever you're doing. Well, Jack has certainly qualified his techniques by the amount of successes he's had. I'd like to thank you very much for being part of this tape, Jack. Thanks, Bevan. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I hope that, uh, some of these budding um, sheepdog trainers uh, 